Can you stop? Can you actually move? Oh my god, I don't know where it is. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about university advice and as someone going into third year, I'd like to think I've got a bit of experience in what uni's like. So this video is just going to be me giving you some advice and some top tips on how to I keep wanting to say survive uni but it's not like that well sometimes it feels like that but how to make the most of your uni experience so if you're someone who's going to uni this September if you've got siblings or family going to uni then this video could be good for you so if you like the sound of that then keep on watching so I'm going to try and split this video into sections like subsections so if you want to skip to a certain part then you can so yeah I'll just leave um, timestamps for each of the different sections so I actually did freshers twice thinking about it because I did start a dental course which I then quit like six months later because I was not feeling it um, and then I did a different course and started again so I have had two freshers um, I can't really remember them like I feel so old thinking back to freshers my first freshers I actually had a friend already at uni so I went to most of the events with her and my flatmates because I didn't meet them till quite late and I didn't find them really online they went to like completely different events to me so I'd say the first thing is if possible if you can find out what your flatmates are going to I'd try and go to similar events to them because that gives you a chance to bond and have fun and get to know a bit more about them because obviously you're going to be living with these people unless you're living at home but you're going to be living with these people so it's nice to get an idea of what they're like what they're into and just generally have fun with them because it kind of breaks the ice it's just like a chance for you to all get drunk together and go out and I think that's the best way to mingle with people that you're going to be living with. For my uni they did have a lot of like advertisements for wristbands and some of them were like £70. At ours we have like the student union so you have a wristband for that and then we have an in-town one as well. I think I went for the in-town one because the other one was so expensive. Have a look around, ask other people who have already been before and see which one's best because they're both probably going to be good. I don't think I went about it in the best way because with my flatmates that I had in first year, they weren't really like me, they were very different. And so as a result, because I already knew someone else who lived on the accommodation but not in my flat, I kind of just kept going to her because I felt a bit out of my comfort zone and I was mingling with people that I wouldn't normally talk to. But looking back, I think if you are in that situation where you immediately think, wow, these people aren't who I'd normally hang out with, don't immediately discard them. Don't exclude yourself from events. Still try and make the effort to socialise with them because you are living with them for a whole year, so it is good to have nice vibes between all of you and even if you don't hang out socially because you might have different interests it's still nice to have that kind of acquaintance slash friend relationship with them and if you need support off them or if you just want a bit of company and your friends aren't around they'll be there for you but even if you feel really awkward and nervous just pretend that you're not like literally bluff it because they don't know what you're like they've never met you before so you can literally act like the most confident crazy outgoing person ever and they wouldn't know any different Living away it does give you a lot of independence because you're not relying on your family to buy your food. You've just got that, you're kind of thrown in the deep end really. You have to do your own shopping, you've got your own keys, you've got your own bills to pay and everything, but I loved it. Like, I didn't feel stressed and obviously I was in actual accommodation the first year and you don't have to sort the bills out yourself. You also have independence compared with like sixth form or college. You have to literally work to your own initiative. You decide how much work you do, not the teachers, the lecturers. They won't say, they'll, they might set you some work to do, but you don't have to do it. You don't even have to go to the seminar, but I would recommend that you do just because you don't want to get in the habit of falling behind and not having much motivation to work and it's honestly it's so easy to fall into but to be fair with things like extra reading and stuff I started for the first few weeks and found it too hard and it wasn't helping me so I kind of stopped this wouldn't work for everyone some people need to do the extra reading to fully understand things but for me it was like it was stressing me more than I needed to be so I wouldn't get overly stressed about work that's set unless it's an assignment because we have seminars and you have to do a bit of reading around those but, but sometimes when you get set random reading for lectures they're not going to question you on it it's just more having that extra knowledge for when it comes to assignments but I'd rather wait till the time that exams come around and then do my own research then that I can actually understand because sometimes they like to give you the most confusing sources from like 1996 written in literally not English and I'm just like no there's no point me wasting my time so you've got to judge for yourself whether it's going to be beneficial for you just because the uni says it is doesn't mean it necessarily is I've literally used one course book for one module 
I bought other books, haven't really touched them. Don't, don't rush into buying books. Try and ask people in the year above what they recommend because you find a lot of people will sell books after first year because they realise they're not going to use it. They give you this really overwhelming reading list and you're like, oh my god, I've got to spend hundreds of pounds on books. But for starters, try and look if you can find the book second hand because that's a lot cheaper and obviously there's no problem with getting a second hand book. It might just have a few notes in which actually can help you sometimes. But, but yeah, don't rush into buying everything that's on the reading list because chances are that it'll either be online for free or you can go in the library and rent out the book or you don't need it at all. Especially at my uni, social life is a very big thing. I think at uni's been rated like one of the highest, best nightlifes or something. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that, but that's probably because I'm used to it. So uni's SU will hold a lot of events. I think ours are on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I think if you were just studying and never went out or never joined societies, you would literally like, your brain would be fried. So try and get involved with as much as you can society-wise. Go on nights out. In first year, people go crazy, I think. like Because for a lot of people, first year doesn't count. Like for my course, it didn't count and I'm kind of upset because my grades were in first year and then second year when it counted they went down so that's a bit annoying but me personally I wouldn't want to get a bad grade in first year I know it doesn't count but for me I wanted to see how good I could do and then that would help me in second and third year and especially because I've already done loads of reading in first year it aids me to get a good degree overall it's the foundation year where you, you learn the basic topics and then you build on those in consecutive years so I think you'd be silly to waste your first year and just go out every night you still have a lot of chances to go out in second year and probably third year this year I think I'm going to create a really organized plan to make sure I get pieces of work done and then once I have I'm rewarded with a night out. I think it's nice especially if you have weekends free to go out at the end of the week because you do your work and then it's like oh yeah once this is all done at the weekend I can kind of let loose a bit but we also have student nights which are Tuesdays and Thursdays so Now for the boring part, the reason we're at uni. Um, don't be afraid to ask the lecturer if you don't understand something. Email is used so much at uni. Like, if you didn't use email before, like, I didn't really use it. You, I'm literally checking my emails every day now. They are there to help you. Some of them might seem a bit intimidating and some are absolutely just annoying let's put it that way but you can tell the ones that are really there to help you and you can also talk to people that are in the year above that have done the modules for me it was actually most helpful to have a group of supportive friends so if I didn't understand something I could just go to there and sometimes we do like group sessions in the library and discuss stuff or do our assignments together no plagiarism don't plagiarize they don't shut up about that in my uni it's probably the same everywhere just don't plagiarize because you will not get away with it you'll probably get kicked out of uni so just keep your work original you can get ideas off your friends but just make sure that you have some originality and you use different research to back up your points and things like that. It really helps to like teach each other and bounce off each other and ask questions. So try and get friends that recognise that partying's great but so is doing work. <laughs> so in terms of motivation, that guy always gets ice cream, he's like 50. And I feel like that's why Mr. Whippy stops right outside his house because they know that he's going to come and get ice cream. Oh, and his wife is as well. It's so cute. Yeah, so a bit more on motivation. It's very easy at uni to lose motivation. I feel like I literally have periods where I'm like, yes, want to work, want to do well, want to get amazing grades, can't wait to get my degree. And then I'd say that's about like 30% of the time, if I'm being honest. Then 70% of the time I'm like, I really, really cannot be bothered with this. Like, I hate education, hate learning, hate writing, hate reading. I, I actually genuinely do not like reading, especially like academic sources. It just goes over my head. So I really have to force myself to read. But I do quite like doing assignments, especially when they're interesting and also it's quite rewarding when you see how you used to write compared to when you write in third year and see the skills you've picked up and how your grades sometimes go up mine went down this year but everyone else's did as well so I'm not too fussed but don't get in the habit of not going to lectures because it's so easy to fall into that and you just have no motivation to get out of bed you're just like okay because we have this system where they record the lecture and you can just watch it at home but I know that I wouldn't do that like I've never had the motivation to open my laptop and review a lecture that's happened that I missed and so I try and go to as many as I can unless I'm not feeling well. For me, it's not the end of the world if you miss a couple lectures, but if you miss them frequently, I feel like your general motivation just drops and you don't want to do anything. Just try and think about when you got exception to uni, how ecstatic you felt, the reason you're at uni, not just to have a social life, but to get a degree, get a good job, and hopefully all the hard work that you put in will be reflected in your grade at the end. Please don't stress about your student loan. 
I don't understand why people stress. Honestly, they're like, oh my god, I don't want to go to uni, I'm just going to be in so much debt. When you have a job, you don't even pay it back until you earn 25k, which is such a decent amount of money to live off. And when they do take the money off you, they take it in such a small proportion each month, you won't even notice it's gone. Because I think they take it out before you actually get your paycheck, so you really won't feel that money go. I think so many people panic, they're like, oh my god, I've got thousands to pay off. After 30 years, if you haven't paid it all off, they write it off anyway. Like, it's really not going to affect you that much, and I actually think student loans are such a good idea because they're actually pretty generous especially for people that have low income household like I did in first and second year have quite a low income household I don't now so I've got slightly less loan but I've still got a decent amount but it's the most money I've ever lived off it's so sustainable you can treat yourself you can get nice food and I think the main reason that I stress so little about my finance at uni is because I budget so well people will literally get their loan in. you get normally get your loan in three installments people will just have their first loan in they'll go crazy be like okay let's go on a shopping spree buy loads of trainers new clothes and everything but I know if I did that I couldn't guarantee how much I'd have left to live off and if it would last me after that splurge so what I do I actually get my mom to work this out because all the maths would hurt my brain but what I do is whatever money I have coming in I'll sort out how much is coming out and then whatever's left I will split that over the number of weeks I'm at uni so I have a weekly budget normally it's around 80 pounds And also if you want to have a big bulk of money for events like birthdays, Christmas, and you don't want that to come out of your weekly budget, what I do is I'll just say, okay, so keep aside like £400 bulk, and then obviously your weekly money will go down slightly, not actually that much, because it doesn't have that much impact. And then you've got a big bulk of money, which can be your emergency money and your money for bigger events. Bigger events. Then you've got your weekly money to live off to get your food, to go to social events, to stock up on makeup, and I really do recommend budgeting like that, whether you do it weekly or monthly. But don't just when you get your installment go and splurge because it's just not sensible and then the people that do that tend to be the ones that are literally like they have a month until their next installment comes in and they have like zero pounds in their account having to borrow money or live off like bread so yeah I do recommend if you are stressing about how to be wise with your student loan definitely split it into a weekly budget it's helped me so much and I do that at home as well it saved me and I feel richer than ever to be fair and I don't even have a job. My friends have jobs, they seem to struggle more than me so I'm clearly doing something right. Cooking. The biggest skill that uni has taught me is cooking. Before uni, I didn't know how to boil pasta. I didn't know how to boil an egg. All I knew how to make was like jam on toast. And nowadays, I'm literally thriving with my food, like making balanced meals with, you know, veg, carbs, protein. It tastes gorgeous, they're nutritious, and I actually take time to cook because I find it really therapeutic. So it's very rare that I'll just have, like, packet food that's already made, like, I don't really do that. As a student, like, I think it's funny because a lot of people say, okay, so with the student budget, all you can afford to do is have, like, ready meals every day. But ready meals are actually more expensive than if you just buy loads of, like, base products to make meals from scratch like I don't understand people that live off ready meals are probably the privileged ones but yeah it is handy to know how to cook basic things before uni if you haven't already that's probably the biggest area that I've gained my independence in cooking because my mum used to cook for me and now I cook for myself even at home when I come home for the summer or for the holidays I still cook for myself because I enjoy it so much and I never thought I'd be saying that because a few years back I was literally like I don't know how to turn the oven on like I genuinely 17 years old didn't know how to turn the cooker on and I think that's shocking get testing out some recipes that you can have that are quick and easy to make nutritious because you don't want to fall into the trap of eating junk food all the time so i'd say they're the main points about uni that i can think of hopefully that's helped you or someone you know and i hope you have the best time at uni because it is honestly such a good time it's a very stressful time but but i know that if i wish uni away and i'm just like i want to graduate now i want to graduate now i'm going to look back and be like i wish i was back at uni because if you think about it it's just a few years to not be actually working well you can work obviously part-time to be in your own space, hanging with friends, learning interesting topics that are going to contribute towards your future career, hopefully. So yeah, apart from the stress, it is like, it's probably going to be like three of the best, three or more of the best years of your life. So don't wish it away and just look forward to it. Don't be stressed because everyone's in the same boat, like I said, and you'll smash it. So I hope you liked the video and if you did like it, please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.